Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to another week of the SOS Bulletin, delivering to you specially curated news by yours truly, Silas OS. And boy, do we have some spicy headlines for you today. So let's take a look at what we've got. Capcom announces Street Fighter 6 and people are talking about everything except for Street Fighter 6. Capcom also announces their new fight collection. Did Phil Spencer and Bobby Kotick hook up? Some more details about Insomniac, Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine get announced. Atlas reveals the sequel to a cult classic JRPG. More clarification about the Wii U and 3DS eShop closure. And will there be a Persona announcement by the end of the month? So let's start off with a continuation of last week's bulletin. I spoke about the Capcom countdown, and that countdown reached zero, and what we got announced was Street Fighter 6. We saw a teaser trailer showing a really hench Ryu, like, why? The man was looking like they had him hulked out, all his veins. I have to say, the fidelity of that model is very impressive, but I see a lot of actual Street Fighter fans, they're not too happy with his appearance. The only image I have in my head of Ryu is his Smash model, and I do have to say the Smash model does look better than Capcom's own Street Fighter 6 model. The teaser also revealed a new character called Luke, who seems to be some sort of American fighter, so I think he'll punch things, but with an American accent. I, I know Street Fighter. The teaser trailer gave us no release date, but really no one is talking about the game. What people are talking about is the logo. And yeah, it is it's it's a lame logo. Look at the all look at all the other Street Fighter logos. These are cool, they're flashy, everyone knows it. This What? And the logo talk just got even more spicy because people discovered that this logo it's just an Adobe stock image, like, it's it's almost identical. So Capcom, they didn't even try, it was just like, they, they pretty much yoinked some randomers logo, and were like, yeah, we can get away with this. But people notice because, I don't know, some people don't have better things to do. However, what I do respect is the actual creator of this logo, well, he's on the hustle, he's on the grind, he sees this, he's not mad, he's just looking for some bread. He's already like, yo, Capcom. Let me just, uh, sell you the exclusive rights of this logo and make this whole controversy go away, yeah? You give me some money, we can just brush this under the rug, alright? And, yeah, I gotta respect it. I, I do the same. I do the same. Anything for the bread. Anything for the bread. So, yeah, I hope you're excited for Street Fighter VI. As for me, I'm just sort of looking to see what kind of payday this logo guy gets. But Capcom still has some news left in them, as they named the Capcom Fighting Collection, which is basically just a collection of 10 of their classic fighting games. To save me the time of reading them, the list of all of them will be up on screen. And if you're a fan of these, well here you are, they're out officially on all platforms, which I'm sure will be great for you. I think the main headline for this is that all of these games are being released with online, with rollback netcode. Now, for those who don't know about coding, you and me are the same. I don't know anything about coding. But long story short, Rollback makes fighting game online play better, more fun. You won't have any of this stupid lag, or at least a lot less of it. And it's much more accommodating to people with slower internet speeds so more people can get involved. In general, the entire fighting game community has been campaigning for Rollback Netcode to be implemented in pretty much every fighting game. And the fact that we're getting to a point where Capcom, probably one of the biggest fighting game names out there, is implementing this into their games, well, that's a good sign. Things are looking up for us. In all honesty, I've said that I don't know Street Fighter. I don't know the other Capcom fighting games. But this collection looks pretty appealing, especially since I can play it online. I've always wanted to try other fighting games that aren't Smash, so I can get involved with some other aspects of the fighting game community. You know, the parts that aren't, you know, harassing people. Or at least harassing people a little bit less than the Smash players. Speaking of harassment, Microsoft and Activision. Now, we all know the whole Activision harassment thing. It was an extremely toxic work environment to be in, especially if you're a woman facing constant sexual abuse and probably just making their lives miserable. And as we know, the CEO, Bobby Kotick, knew all of this was going on and made efforts to cover it up because, well, I don't know, fuck that guy. I don't know, something wrong with him. It's bad enough to the point where he actually threatened to kill someone over the phone, one of his employees, which, like... Dude. What the fuck? And, of course, Microsoft, they saw, yo, Activision, their stock's plummeting. Ayo, hey, they're gonna be a pretty cheap company to buy. Well, not cheap, because it was $68.7 billion that Microsoft purchased Activision for, 
But before this whole incident, I imagine the price would have been way higher. So Microsoft were like, yo, harassment? <laughs> yo, let me get in on a deal here. So Phil Spencer, we all know, big Xbox guy, publicly condemned the working conditions at Activision. Yeah, but just a couple of days after the damning report from the Wall Street Journal came out about Activision, my man was already on the phone speaking to Bobby Kotick. Like, the body was not even cold and Phil was sliding into DMs. It probably went down something like this. Phil was like, Bobby, what's good? I hear that you've covered up sexual harassment and threatened to kill someone. Yeah, that sucks. Why would you do that? <laughs> anyway, so... How about, you know, I get you a little bit of a get-out-of-jail-free card in this one. And Bobby's like, fuck, Phil, that sounds good, man. Phil's like, yeah, I knew you'd like that. So basically what we do, I'm going to buy Activision, right, for $68.7 okay? You following this, Bobby? Bobby's like, I, okay, well, that's my job gone, but I do need this out of my hands. He's like, yeah, well, the thing is, you can sell your, your share of it, and I think you'd be walking away with something like 400 mil and all this heat off of your ass. You can just retire and never face any consequences. And then Bobby's obviously just like, fuck yeah, run it. Okay, so maybe some creative liberties were taken when I made my recreation of the phone call, but I think that's probably the most digestible way to convey it. I don't know what this says about Phil Spencer as a person, but... It's always going to be a bit scummy, the fact that you're capitalizing on, I suppose, the suffering of other people in a way, but that is business. And it's not like Phil Spencer was ever our friend in the first place. So this is probably just what we need to expect from these big CEOs. Either way, it's just really scummy, and the main point is the fact that all of this is even happening is like almost instantly after all these allegations c came out, Bobby already gets a get-out-of-jail-free card from Phil Spencer. Like, yeah, okay, I don't know. There's not much else to say on it, I'll be honest. I just wanted to talk about it because, obviously, this is a major thing going on. And I will be updating in future episodes of The Bulletin, so subscribe for those. Moving on to some PlayStation news. Insomniac has announced Spider-Man 2 for this year and Wolverine for the future. I'm very excited for Spider-Man 2. But what I was worried about is, will it be cross-gen? Because remember when Miles Morales came out? And initially we thought it was going to be PS5 exclusive. But then after a while they were like, yo, by the way, this is coming out in PS4 as well. And some PS4 owners were obviously happy because they could play the game. But PS5 owners like myself, well, we were sort of like, so what you're saying is we're being inhibited by the past console. And I get it because not that many people had a PS5 at that point. So it hurt their sales, and ultimately not as many people would get to experience the work that Insomniac has put out. But now we know Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine will be PS5 exclusive, which means these will be next-gen all the way. The graphics are going to be crazy. We'll probably get more DualSense enhancements, which is something I was really disappointed in with Miles Morales. And I'm hoping for Wolverine and Spider-Man, just a super expansive world. I'm sure Spider-Man could have multiple cities in it. I would be very surprised if we're just constrained to New York again. But yeah, basically, we are guaranteed for the next Insomniac superhero projects, we'll be getting a full next-gen experience. And I guess it is disappointing for people who maybe still don't have a PS5 by then, but that's not my problem. So, do you know what was really left field? Atlas. All of a sudden, they just went and announced Soul Hackers 2. Now, for those who don't know, Soul Hackers is a Shin Megami Tensei spin off that was initially released on the Sega Saturn. Like most Atlas games, it has a bit of a cult following, but recently Atlas has popped off. Persona 5 has really thrust them into the spotlight of the JRPG scene, and that publicity has led to increased sales of Shin Megami Tensei 5, which typically is a series that hasn't sold amazingly throughout its history, and now they're trying to thrust their Persona 5 publicity towards other spin-offs like Soul Hackers. And I think that's great. The more different IPs I'm seeing from Atlas, the better. I don't want them to just become a Persona company. They have Shin Megami Tensei and all of its other spin-offs that right now is optimal to make more of because everyone has their eyes on Atlas. So I'm actually very excited for Soul Hackers 2. I'm not going to say I know Soul Hackers at all, but I liked Persona 5, I liked Persona 4. 
I'm liking Shin Megami Tensei 5. It's kicking my ass, but I'm liking it. So, yeah, I'm excited for Soul Hackers 2. The art style looks great, as always with Atlas. I'm sure the music's going to be great. The one thing I do have to say is, it's releasing on the 26th of August, which I think is quite close maybe to Xenoblade 3. And I'm not really sure if they want to be competing with that, but it is releasing in all platforms, which is slowly starting to become the new norm for Atlas, which is nice. So I think maybe Switch owners may not be so quick to buy Soul Hackers because they want to play Xenoblade 3, but people on PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam, they eat that game up. So yeah, excited for Soul Hackers 2. Last week, I spoke about the Wii U and 3DS eShop closing, but I just wanted to add an extra detail onto that pretty quickly because I didn't mention it before. So yes, the eShop closes in May 2023, but you won't be able to add funds to your account from the 29th of August onwards. So that's even less time to preserve as much as you can. So if you're in a rush, you should probably rush more now because you have even less time than I initially thought. And last but not least, Atlas again, Persona. As part of the 25th anniversary of Persona, Atlas has been doing a different reveal each month. Now these typically aren't very big and just involve stuff like merch and everything. But for some reason at the moment, the fandom is really building up to this February reveal. Why? I'm not too sure. But seeing as there's not too many days of February left, an announcement Persona related is coming pretty soon. That could be something small like a Persona shoe collab with Nike. Or it could be something big like a Persona 3 remake, which people want. I'd personally just be down with the port. If any Persona games need remade, it's Persona 1 and 2. And then obviously there's the idea of a Persona 6, which I do expect them to reveal by the end of their 25th anniversary hype cycle, but even if it is revealed this month, it's not coming for a good while. They're just going to show off the logo if they do that. I mean, hell, they're making SMT5, and now they're making, although probably almost finished, Soul Hackers 2. So I don't know how much resources they actually have for Persona. I'm not too aware of Atlas's inner workings. But if there is something big like Persona 6, I will probably make a dedicated bulletin. So stay tuned for that if Persona 6 is revealed. Because after all, like it or not, I have spoken about Persona a fair bit on this channel. And that's about it for the SOS bulletin. A bit of a slower news week, although definitely still some interesting things. If you want to stay updated on all these different gaming things, well, subscribe and hit the bell button. Why haven't you? I mean, there's just, the amount of you subscribed is stupidly low. Like, what are you guys doing? I, it annoys me. Subscribe, okay? Thank you. So yeah, uh, see you next week. This has been Silas OS. Bye. <laughs>